Dear viewers, welcome to yet another episode of Your Life, Your Money. We are in the beginning of the year 2023. This is the time to prepare your to-do list in the year 2023 and beyond. Today I have picked up a topic for all the NRIs who have a plan to retire and come back to India in the year 2023 or in the next 10 to 12 years. What are the things you should focus on? What is the preparation you should make? What are the things you should know of? Everything I'll be talking to you in this video. Watch this video till the end. Each and every point that I discuss is very, very important. This is NRI Money Clinic for you. And I am Dr. Chandra Khan, but your financial guide for a happy living. NRI Money Clinic. No hype, just the right advice. Let's look at all the things you should focus on if you have an intention to come back to India in the next 10-12 years. What are the things you should focus on? I have listed here seven major headings. Point number one, the first thing that you have to do is check your preparedness to retire. Are you ready to retire when you decide to come back? Whether that is this year, five years down the line, 10 years down the line or 15 years down the line. How do you know that you are ready to retire? This is the tricky question. It's not an easy question to answer. It's not easy to find an answer for this. The first thing that you have to look at is, do I have enough cash flows to support me during my retirement years? The circumstances for individuals can vary. I had prepared a video earlier, which has become very popular. How will you know you have enough money to retire? I'll be giving a link to this video here in the card section as well as in the description box. Please go through this detailed video and check yourself whether you are ready to retire, whether you have enough resources to retire. And based on this, you can decide when do you want to return back to India. The second point you have to attend immediately is do you have a health insurance in India? If you have a health insurance, do you have sufficient health insurance in India? Should you buy health insurance in India now or if you are coming back after a couple of years, should you buy subsequently? If you are a person who is about to come to India in 2023 or in next two, one to two years, if you don't have a health insurance, time to buy it is now. But if you are planning to retire five years, ten years later, then you can wait look at your health status if you are a person who is healthy and you have no pre-existing health issues like diabetes blood pressure or something which is bothering you from a long period of time you can as well postpone buying a health insurance to the dates which are closer to coming back to india just remember one thing by the time you come back to india you should not be in a position for the health insurance company to say no i will not give you health insurance this is option one that you have to keep in mind likewise there will be two years waiting for some of the ailments so it is always better that at least the minimum period you should buy health insurance in india is two years before you come back to india uh, for the detailed analysis of who should buy when should buy what type of policies one should focus on there is a video I have done earlier by title NRI Dilemma, should I buy health insurance in India today or when should I buy this? Again, I'll be giving the link to that video here in the card section as well as I post that link in the description box below. Watch this video for guidance on the subject. The third point you should focus on when you come back to India, where is that you are going to stay? Which house, which city? You should develop clarity around that. Many NRIs think I have got a property over there and they do not think beyond this point. Think about it. The property what you have, is that the one where you want to go and live? The place where you are going to stay, is that the place where you are going to choose? There are NRIs who worked in places like Ahmedabad, but they belong to Bangalore and they have a property in Ahmedabad. They have an intention to retire in Bangalore or some other city. Probably the place what you have right now may not be suitable for you. You and your wife have a discussion, find out where do you want to go and stay and try to have a property over there. What should you do with the existing property? You can take a call based on your comfort. If you think you can afford one more property, by all means you can buy the property in a city or a place of your choice. But if you cannot afford, it's not a bad idea to swap the old property, sell it off, get the cash and buy a property of your choice in a place of your choice. 
make sure the place you choose is a decent place it has safety you are getting older in your retirement you need safety you should look at all facilities around you like hospitals markets being very close don't go to very secluded places where safety becomes an issue or you do not have the required facilities so it's always a good idea think about it and make proper decision one point that comes to my mind is if you have purchased a property long back and this may not be the contemporary property what you are looking for it's not a bad idea to sell off that property and in lieu of that property buy a contemporary property which meets your requirement point number four unfinished responsibilities towards your children these are the days where people do not marry very early and you could be the person who married late and you could have taken time to have your children as a result of which when the retirement is staring at you your children could be still small or they are yet to go to the college or you may be looking at a big expenses for funding your children's education when you are very close to retirement this is something which you have to be very very careful do not overburden yourself with hefty education fees of your children these days there are plenty of alternatives we have done detailed videos on how you can fund your children's education through loans i have also done a detailed video on what is the changes that are happening in the society how parents have to look at funding of education for their children at the fag end of your career when you are staring at a retirement your priority should be in building good retirement cash flows not overspending on your children's education or making disproportionate allocation for marriage of children you have to find a comfort between these two don't get carried away by the ego don't get carried away by the pressure of the society focus on your retirement and try to find alternatives how you could fund other expenses point number five know the risk that you will go through when you come back to india there are risks pertaining to taxation which i'll talk in another point and there are risks of falling interest rate the falling interest rate is a major risk you will go through when you come back to india india had fd rates of 14% somewhere in 80s and 90s and gradually started falling down and currently we are seeing a interest rate regime of somewhere between 4 and a half to 6 and a half percent but if you think this is a low interest rate make no mistake in the next 5 to 7 years india will go through a phase where its interest rate is likely to fall down to 3 to 4% india is developing and as a result of which the interest rate falling down cannot be escaped every country which has developed or in the path to development has gone through this phase i don't see why india can be different so if you do not make this calculation and you think that you are going to get 6% on your fixed deposit and make your retirement cash flows based on that figure you could be up for a rude shock be prepared for a falling interest rate point number 6 know about the taxation changes that will be applicable to you when you come back to india you have a phase called rnor phase resident not ordinarily resident you are a resident of india but government of india has given a special benefit for the nris who are returning back a period of up to 2 years depending on how many number of years you have stayed outside this is a phase which is given to you to adjust or to it's a cooling off period where you can settle your affairs outside of india getting back the money is end of service benefit or liquidation of your properties or closing of the plants that you have outside this is a cooling off period which is given to you during this rnor phase the income that you derive from outside of india will not be taxed in india even though you are living in india as a resident but you have a special category called resident not ordinarily resident not everything is tax free during this particular phase but there are specific exclusions that are given again on this channel there are detailed videos on what is rnor status how many years of rnor status you can enjoy who can get who cannot get it the facilities every minute detail has been spoken by a chartered accountant in two of the videos we are giving you a link in this card section as well as leaving the it in the description box in case if you want to look into that 
One another point you have to keep in mind is what happens to your overseas assets when you come back to India. As I already said, during RNOR phase, it will not have any tax impact. But if you still carry the overseas assets beyond that particular point, you have two obligations. One, you have to declare it in India. What are the bank accounts you are having? What assets you are maintaining? While filing the tax returns, you need to declare that. Which assets have to be declared? There is a detailed video again. Uh, look out for this video in the description box below and you can know the finer points of what all the things you have to declare. Likewise, if you sell these assets, it could be property, closing of a plan, maturity proceeds of any bonds or investment. If it comes beyond RNOR phase, it will be taxed in India in accordance with the income tax law, be it the income tax or it could be the capital gains. In accordance with the taxation here, it will become taxable. So you have to think, should you leave it outside of India or you should take a timely action to liquidate them and bring that back to India before your RNOR period ends. You should also know about the NREFDs. What happens to NREFDs? Many people think if you have booked an NREFD for let's say 10 years and you booked it this year and at the fag end of this year you come back to India. Because it's an NREFD, and you will enjoy the tax-free status for the next 10 years even though you have come back to India. That's not the correct version of it. The day you land in India, you become a resident Indian and you cannot hold NREFDs or NRE accounts or NRO accounts. NRE and NRO accounts are held in accordance with the FEMA law. If you are holding these, then you will be violating the FEMA law. The income tax very clearly says if you are holding NRE fixed deposits against the FEMA law, then it will become taxable. So you have an obligation to convert these NRE FDs into resident FDs. You don't have to break them, but you have to inform the bank as soon as you arrive within the next two or three months and ask them to change the tax status of this fixed deposit to the resident FDs. Even though you are spending the RNOR period, the interest you get from these residence FDs will not be tax free in India, rather you have to pay taxes on that from day one after arriving in India. And for most NRIs, this is a major issue. If you are sitting on crores and crores of NRE FDs, you are exposed to falling interest rate when you come back and you are exposed to a massive taxation which you are not used to. So this can drive a big hole in your retirement income. Think about it and think about what you could do about it and that action should start now. Many people have also a doubt about what happens to my international currency. I have got dollars, I have got GBP, I have got Australian, Singapore or Canadian dollars. What happens to them? Can I keep that? Can I, should I have to convert that to back into Indian rupees? You have an option either to keep it or convert that into Indian national rupees. So what are the possibilities in this case? If you have booked an FCNR deposit, now FCNR deposits can be held for the maximum maturity period you have booked. You don't have to break the FCNR deposits at all. The interest you get from the FCNR deposit will be tax free for you during your RNOR phase. But beyond RNOR phase, even though you are carrying FCNR accounts, the interest that you get or the currency gains that you might make from that will come under the income tax. What happens to your FCNR deposits when they mature? That is a time where you have to take a decision to convert into INR or to continue them. If you decide to continue, what can you do about it? There is a special account called RFC account, Resident Foreign Currency account. This is not something which you can start fresh as a resident Indian. If you have an FCNR deposit or if you have brought money from outside of India, instead of liquidating that and converting into INR, you have an option to hold that as RFC account for your lifetime. You will have a free repatriability of movement of money outside of India. You don't have to worry about rupee depreciating or if you are speculating that the Indian rupee will fall through and it makes sense for me to hold on to uh, these dollars or the foreign currency, you can do so. Or if you have some unfinished responsibilities or liabilities to be discharged in due course of time after you come back to India, you can definitely maintain RFC account and the foreign currency accounts. A point to add here is RFC accounts like any other accounts will become taxable in India. Point number eight, 
you must get professional help to secure your cash flows during your retirement this is not something you can do after you land in india this is that you have to do now today or at the earliest possible time it requires a detailed assessment of your assets and liabilities it requires a detailed assessment of what risk you might go through what are your priorities a lot of detailing is required to secure your cash flows how can you secure cash flow against the falling interest rate how can you minimize or negate your taxes for this professional help is very much required if you are looking out for professional help in this particular line then you can make best use of our services we have helped thousands of families across globe to create happy families a reduced taxation incidence for returning an rise all these works we do these things on a day to day basis send us the message now and one of our financial guide who is an expert in this particular field will be ever ready to help you in this last but the most important point number 9 word of abundant caution people know when you come back to india you are a returning in our you have worked outside you have accumulated a lots of money dollars indian rupees fds and various other assets now the relationship managers of different firms are behind you the builders are behind you relatives are behind you free advice flows from your friends and relatives none of these people have a role to play at this time you have earned your money it's your hard earned money it becomes very important for you to save this money from all these vultures stay away from these guys take only a professional help and even when the advice come from the professionals check it and challenge it from your common sense and if your common sense says it is a worthwhile thing to do this is something which is logical to do and if you are convinced inside that this is the route i have to take then only you move forward on that otherwise save every penny that you have earned during your nra stint dear viewers hope the video that i have done today helped you to understand the points that you should focus and what can create a happy retirement for you when you come back to india for good if it did help you don't forget to like this video if you are a person who is watching my channel for the first time or if you are yet to subscribe for the channel please hit the subscribe button and press the bell icon don't forget to share these videos with the near and dear ones thank you very much for watching this episode on nri money clinic i shall be back with you next friday with yet another edition of your life your money till then stay safe press the bell icon for more details and subscribe our channel